Parents, it's no secret that our health is at a crossroads and that our kids are struggling more than ever before. An overwhelming majority of kids these days have some sort of chronic health struggle. And while the actual label for those things might look differently, right? There's stuff like ADHD or sensory, anxiety, autism, or early life struggles, right? Baby things like colic, reflux, constipation, nursing, latching issues. The actual label looks a lot different from kid to kid and depending on how old they are. But the underlying theme is that we've got way more stress in our kids than they should have and we've gotta do something about it. And from our perspective, when we have this overwhelming challenge and overwhelming obstacles that our kids are up against, we need to take a different approach, right? Because when we're labeling or when we're listing off all of those different labels or different diagnoses, it makes us start to think in that traditional medical model of, all right, well, what's the treatment? What's the medication? What's the drug? What's the intervention that we pair with those things? But that's not really going to, going to address the root. That's not really going to address the underlying why behind these things. So let's think about it from a different framework and let's talk about why we have so many kids stuck in survival mode, stuck in stress. The perfect storm is the language that you hear us use at Thrive to describe this because this is really what's going on with our kids. There's not really a single factor or a single issue that's at the root of this epidemic. It's a perfect storm of extra stressors that's leading to all of these different struggles. So the, the way I want you to think about this is what is causing our kids to be in more of a state of fight or flight. The technical term for that is the sympathetic nervous system. There's the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. And the sympathetic is what you hear us refer to as the gas pedal. Your gas pedal is the fight or flight response that is perfect for what your body needs when you're in some sort of survival mode situation. The problem is that is not everyday life. And so when our kids are stuck in that mode, when there isn't really anything that should be stressing them out, right? They're not running from a bear in the woods. It leads to a nervous system stuck in this state where they can't do all of the brake pedal or the parasympathetic things, which is our digestion and our immune system and our rest and our relaxation and our ability to focus and regulate emotions and all of the things that are at the root of the kids' struggles these days. So this gas versus brake balance is the key for everything. And that's how we wanna look at this epidemic of perfect storm challenges, is not isolating each single condition and trying to focus on what the specific treatment or protocol is for that. It's just how do we help our kids function better as a whole, right? It's the difference between a, a holistic, what would be called salutogenic perspective of health, where we're focused on creating health, versus one that's a traditional medical model, which is pathogenesis, which is focusing on what creates disease, what creates sickness. If we can get a kid healthier, it's going to help the diagnosis or the label no matter what it is. And so that is really the root and the starting point of this is getting kids out of a state of survival mode, getting them out of a state of stress. And that's why my favorite term for an adjustment is just pumping the brakes. We've gotta pump the brakes on that survival mode. And that looks like a lot of different things. The biggest one is the very top of the neck here. That's what we're gonna think about from a chiropractic perspective. And I wanna give you some tips here of just both uh, both what happens when you know your kids are in our office and we're making those corrections, but also things that you can do from your perspective as parents. But when it comes from a chiropractic perspective, that upper neck is the king. The vagus nerve is the nerve that runs almost all of that brake pedal. It's what controls our immune system and our gut and our digestion. And so when we have that upper cervical subluxation, that stress pattern locked in the top of the neck, that vagus nerve is suppressed and our gas pedal can run rampant. It's like we've got a Lamborghini engine and a bicycle pedal brakes. There's this huge imbalance. We don't have the regulation system that we need. So that's one of the first things we look for, whether it's a baby who's struggling with those colic, constipation, latch, reflux issues, <clears throat> or a toddler with ear infections and speech and motor delays, or a school age kid struggling with anxiety and sensory challenges and who knows what else. That is the starting point. It's get that vagus nerve turned back on clear that upper neck stress and that upper neck survival mode that they've probably been stuck in since birth. And that's the other big piece of this. Where does this come from? More often than not, it is early on in life. That birth process is, birth process is the number one missing piece that we see parents not really being aware of or not really knowing of because their providers, whether it's their OBs or their pediatricians, aren't really talking about it. We're not talking about how if you have extra intervention in trauma and injury at birth, it's going to damage that key sensitive area because a newborn can't really hold their head yet, right? They can't really protect their head and their neck. And so this area is susceptible to way more injury and damage. Listen, my kids have had the most boring, uneventful, um, chill of births as you can, right? We've had home births with all of our babies. 
But even that's a big deal, right? Even that's a pretty intense process and all my kids have needed adjusted at birth, let alone when we have forceps, vacuum extraction, C-section, or just extra hands-on from the doctors or the midwives pulling and turning and guiding that head and neck out. So that's the biggest indicator or the, the reason why we see kids dealing with these upper neck stresses. It's probably from that birth process, either in utero constraint or actually entering the world. Um, and so when we come back to what can we do to pump the brakes, when we're thinking about what can we do to help kids regulate, well, anything that you do is bringing more ease into their life is going to help with that. We think of health as really four pillars. The first one is what we were just talking about of having a healthy nervous system, having a well-adapted and regulated neurological system. Um, but the other three of those are sleep, our nutrition, and our movement. Those make a huge difference. If we are getting the rest that we need, that gives our bodies uh, the ability to hit that reset, that rest and digest mode like they're designed to. Um, if we're moving like we're supposed to, if our kids are playing, if we're exercising, if we're being active, that makes it a lot easier to sleep. First off, your kids have exerted the energy that they need to, but also it's going to literally stimulate the brain. Movement is the key for development. Every time we're moving, we're running, we're playing, we're jumping like that, it is giving the brain good feedback and good input if it's in a kid who is connected and well adjusted. In a kid who is in that subluxated, stressed out state, instead of that good proprioceptive brain feedback and brain input, they get stuck with these SOS signals. And that movement doesn't really have the same benefit for them. It's still helpful, we still need to move and be active and playing, but instead of that good brain feedback and brain um, input that they're getting, they get a little bit of a jumbled up signal and noise with that. And then last one, nutrition. Fueling your body well makes a huge difference too. If we're putting toxic crap into our nervous system, into our body, that means that that stress mode is going to be activated and turned on. So avoiding artificial colors and sweeteners and poisons and toxins in that way makes a huge difference. Fueling your body with nutrient dense foods is going to be the flip side of that. So when we avoid the bad and we wanna add more good into it. This is very cursory info. Um, if you want to dig into that part of this even more, jump uh, into our workshop next week if you're watching this here uh, freshly after we record it. Thursday the 29th, Leap Day, we're doing a Raising Healthy Kids Naturally workshop and that's where we're gonna dig into even more of this content. Dr. Haley, you know, the natural pediatrician provider that I'm presenting this with, I was just talking to her this morning and she had shared, she's got 20 slides ready digging into all of that. How do you fuel your body well? How do you eat clean and have that nutrient dense food that you need. So I don't want to get into that right now, but please join us for that event because we're going to get way, way deeper than that here. But that's the overall summary, guys, that I want to leave you with is that we need to focus on dysregulated kids in a little different way. We don't need to have each different specialist addressing each of these challenges. We just got to focus on what makes them a healthier version of them, right? How do we start with the nervous system? How do we regulate that piece of it so the body can get out of this sympathetic fight or flight state? Uh, this, that's why we love the scan so much at Thrive. One of the scans, HRV, is actually measuring that vagus nerve. It's measuring how turned on is the brake pedal. Are we in a state of balance or are we stuck in more of a state of stress and survival mode? So if that is the piece of it that you're missing, maybe you're checking all those other boxes. Your kids are sleeping. They're moving as they should. You're giving them all the best nutrition and supplements and essential oils. If you're doing all that stuff, maybe just the missing piece is that neurological piece of it please reach out. We'd love to help. We'd love to get your kid regulated because that's really what we're here for. Um, kids deserve to be happy, to be healthy, and to thrive. And that's what we want to help accomplish. Send us a message. Send us a question, a DM if you want to dig into this anymore. If any of that doesn't make sense, we'd be happy to chat more. Have an awesome day, guys, and we'll see you soon.